this match now very delicately poised very few people would have expected to have seen three goals in the first 25 minutes Alan Dillon almost like a point guard just uh, looking around scanning the horizon here's Alan Freeman Seamus O'Shea trying to hold off Alan O'Connor Manager flick it through to Dillon measuring that pass towards Trevor Morton who gets there just in front of Owen Cotter Mortimer a little isolated kicks it in uh, in the general direction of Killian O'Connor but good defending by Owen Cadigan and the Cork dual star gets it away to the far side to Fiekrelich steps by Aidan O'Shea just Paul Kerrigan to aim at inside Mayo have plenty of bodies back including Richie Feeney well it's been very much a tactical battle in the last 10 or 15 minutes after a fairly open start Mayo have got much more organised much harder to break down and this game still very much alive yeah, still very much alive, and uh, again, any time Cork are attacking, Mayo are dropping that extra player back uh, at the edge of the D, and uh, we saw there, it was uh, Richie Feeney that picked up that ball, Jerk Cafferty picked up one previously, so they're not allowing Cork any <coughs> latitude in in front of goal, and they're forcing Cork to be patient and to try and build through the middle, and they have been very successful in, in uh, blocking them so far. Alan Freeman has just become the fourth Mayo player to be booked in this first half, as Andy Moran hangs on for dear life there fouled by a combination of John Miskela and Fintan Gould he'll take the free himself Alan Freeman who's drifted into the full forward line again beats O'Leary in the air O'Leary standing him up but fouling him in the process and that will be a free into Mayo and just when that free was awarded interesting to see Andy Moran turning towards the Hogan stand and imploring the Mayo support to get behind their team well, After uh, quite a slow start now, they're beginning to uh, find their feet. Well, Andy Moore again, Andy has switched with uh, Alan Freeman. He's uh, playing at full forward, but when he won that ball outside, Alan Freeman drifted in from wing half forward right into the edge of the square. It might be a pre-planned pre uh, move and uh, maybe a high advantage over Noel O'Leary. won it well and uh, sucked in the tackle from Noel O'Leary in the foul. Good That's play by Mayo. Three points now from the boot of 19-year-old Killian O'Connor. Two points between the teams as this crucial period before half time looms into view. Seamus O'Shea climbing highest up above Aidan Walsh. He's had a really good first half, the young Brafie man. Linking up with Enda Varley. There are two of the Mayo players who played against Cork in that under 21 final five years ago. Varley has his kick blocked down, and Alan O'Connor back to gobble up the break. Also uh, made short work of Andy Moore and there, Alan O'Connor, as he made some room for himself. As Fiatra Lynch runs down a blind alley on the far side, links up eventually with Paddy Kelly. Looked initially like uh, Rory Hickey had awarded a free there, instead lets the play continue. Alan Dillon growing more and more into this match finding Andy Moore who again peels away to that left hand side to bring Michael Shields out of the middle needs support but it's very slow in arriving this is Keith Higgins up from corner back doesn't score very often and that is well wide the corner back on a rare sally down the field and that will go down as Mayo's fourth wide of this uh, All-Ireland quarter final what's very interesting Mike is that uh, Mayo are winning the kickouts, the Cork kickouts, and Cork are winning the Mayo kickouts. You'd expect it to be, to be the other way around, particularly with Mayo, because uh, the two midfielders, the two O'Shea brothers, come from the same club as Robert Hen Hennebury. Well, that's a very short kickout again from Alan Cork. It did find Owen Cadigan, but he's picked up a knock. And I think that uh, short kickout may have much to do with the dominance of uh, Seamus O'Shea in 
the last 10 or 15 minutes as it has with anything else. Absolutely. As Owen Cadigan is in need of some attention and we'll have a stoppage now as half time gets a little closer. Well, the expectation was coming into this game that uh, Cork's midfield would be far too strong for, for Mayo. And certainly in the first uh, 10, 15 minutes, they were very, very dominant. But Mayo have responded magnificently. And Seamus O'Shea in particular is catching a lot of very, very good high ball. And we saw last week Cork <coughs> persist with a lot of short kickouts against Down. They worked very effectively, uh, varied the kickout strategy, not doing it today as much. Probably felt that their midfield. Uh, should be well able to compete with uh, with Mayo, but it hasn't worked out that way in the last 10 minutes, and Mayo will get a huge boost of confidence coming into half time. Well, there you can see where Aidan O'Shea lost the ball in the tackle and the move that led to Paul Kerrigan's goal. Mayo playing very dearly for that uh, loss of possession as Owen Cadigan in real time is back on his feet. Mayo have hit the last two points of the match. Cork in search of something to take with them into the dressing room for half time as Trevor Mortimer breaks up this latest Cork attack and links up with the goal scorer, Kevin McLaughlin. Alan Dillon was roaring for it on the left flank and steady Aidan O'Shea goes long and Alan Cork gets the fist to it but not very convincingly. Here's O'Neill just eating up the ground there as he got to the ball in front of Andy Mora. Back to his captain, Michael Shields. This is Finton Gould. As Mayo tried to apply the squeeze across that cork 45 meter line. Aidan Walsh now. All the runs covered in the Mayo half of the field. Owen Cadigan had some work to do to win that ball crashes into Keith Higgins and then pumps it into the space in front of Donico O'Connor. Once more, he's in front of Tom Kniff. Lynch spots Kerrigan, drifts inside, and Paul Kerrigan, using the right fist, pops it up and over the bar. Cork's first score for some 10 minutes means they lead by three again. And Paul Kerrigan, one of those players that you can't afford to take your eye off for a moment. No, he drifts inside uh, so effectively. Did it for the goal, did it for that score as well. But the focal point of Cork's attack is Dunnock O'Connor. And when he's on the ball, things happen. He passed out on that occasion to Fintan Gould, who hit a lovely ball into Kerrigan for a good point for Cork. Robert Henley's kick out went right down the middle again. And Cork once more take possession. Pressure being applied by Alan Dillon forcing maybe an extra hand pass there, but Fiacre Lynch gets it outside to Pierce O'Neill. We'll have at least one minute of additional time at the end of this first half as Pierce O'Neill, first chance for him in quite a while to run on that Mayo defence. Alan O'Connor dispossessed by Aidan O'Shea this time. And now Killian O'Connor, wearing 15, but playing a lot of this game out the field. Andy Moore now at full forward. Spots the run of Trevor Morton. Well blocked down by Aidan Walsh. Spread himself, made himself big. As Mortimer looks to release Alan Dillon. And that's a foul and a free into Mayo. I think what's positive for Mayo going into half time is that there are two key forwards. Alan Dillon, particularly in the last 10 minutes, has got into the game and Andy Moore at full forward is certainly winning everything in front of Michael Shields and bringing other players into the game as well. He's a, a distributor as well as a scorer and uh, Mayo will look to the second half with an awful lot of confidence given that those two players are on song today. Killian O'Connor has a 100% record from the free so far, three from three. And this just his fourth appearance in senior championship football. We're heading towards the end of the second minute of additional time and Killian O'Connor reduces the margin to just two points. Rory Hickey, the referee, calls for the ball and this All-Ireland quarter final is far from over. James Horan, the Mayo manager, will be very pleased by and large with how his team have battled back from the concession of an early goal. A penalty from Donegal O'Connor getting Cork off to the perfect start. Still all to play for, though. It's half time. Cork 2 5, Mayo 1 goal and 6. 
as the second half gets underway referee Rory Hickey throws the ball in Mayo well they'll be playing from right to left in this second half chasing down a two point deficit and uh, one of the talking points at half time the fact that in their last two matches Mayo have conceded a total of only three points in the second half two against Galway in the Connacht semi-final just one against Roscommon last time out you'd have to think that impressive record will come under considerable threat in the next 35 odd minutes well they've won a free in through Alan Dillon right from the very start here but Paul their second half records very impressive uh, Mayo in the last couple of matches and uh, that will probably have been one of the points James Horn has been making in that dressing room at halftime Yes, no doubt about that, but I suppose you do have to take into account the conditions again. I know they were extremely impressive against Galway in uh, Castlebar in the Connacht semi-final and scoring, I think it was 1-8 to a point, uh, conceding only a point in that game. And of course against Roscommon in the Connacht final, uh, they were playing with a strong win. Roscommon playing against a very strong breeze, only conceded two, but it's a great start for Mayo again, a good score. Uh, to start the second half and only a point in it at this stage and uh, Mayo full forward line again winning ball out in front of the Cork defence and Cork been un needlessly disi disciplined, undisciplined That was a good confident kick from End of Arley. it's his first point of the match comes from a free on the right hand side and now the gap is back to the minimum Seamus O'Shea he's had a powerful game that solo though left a little too high invited the tackle of Owen Cadigan who's picked up a knock in the process of intercepting that ball but certainly, Seamus O'Shea knows just one way to goal, and that's the direct route. By the looks of things, uh, Andy Moran has started this second half in the Mayo full forward line as Conor Cunahan feels it's time to make a change. Graham Canty is into the Cork team. Man who played here against Mayo back in the All Ireland quarter final in 2002. Also the man who lifted Sam Maguire, of course, last September, and the player who's been taken out, Noel O'Leary. So the All-Ireland champions in a real game here now. Of course, without Daniel Goulding today, also forced to plan without uh, Colm O'Neill and Kieran Sheehan. Really, their attacking resources stretched to the limit. As Graham Canty is forced backwards by Killian O'Connor. Here's Owen Cadigan again. Just managed to release that ball before the tackle came in. Toddy Kassan. And now Finton Gould. Once more, Cork have isolated Donica O'Connor and Paul Kerrigan. Ball goes through the hands. This is Kassan, the all star, popped inside to Donica O'Connor, who came out to meet him, trying to bend that one in, but it's gone wide on his own side. Well, Donald O'Connor made run after run to try and get on the ball there. When he eventually got his shot away, he was outside his range. And certainly, Cork struggling to find the kind of rhythm they got into here last Saturday night against Down. Conor Cunahan has also left his seat in the stand, and he's now on the sideline, just yards away from James Horan. Andy Moore bringing, once again, Michael Shields out to the left-hand side with him. Fancies a cut at this, it's a very ambitious kick, it's close, the umpires take a little look. And they feel that drifted just wide, Mayo's fifth of the match. Again, what was 